Hey, it's Mr. K doing a problem for AP Physics 1. We're going to work with an inclined plane, <clears throat> and we're going to roll something down it for the first time ever. Got a little quarter here. Um, what you've got to realize is before this, we have always worked with masses going down inclined planes, and they've only slid. In fact, if this inclined plane didn't have any friction, then this quarter would act like, just like a box that we we just allow to slide down with some acceleration of whatever component of g it would be. But now, this quarter, this object is going to roll down and rotate as it goes down to the bottom. So there's several ways that we can look at this. Um, one thing that we need to define is, hey, if with this quarter, um, what is the radius of it? <clears throat> and I know I set two meters and four meters here. Really don't want to set those to the same thing as this this round object. So let's just say that we have a round object with a radius oh about 0 0.25. That makes yeah, that's a good number because you know it's a quarter. So there we are, and this thing is going to roll down. And our job is to find out whatever we can find out as it rolls down. So <clears throat> first things first, we'll do a free body diagram. The free body diagram still applies. So we are still going to have mg downwards. We are still going to have our normal force going up and to the right, perpendicular to our inclined plane. And one last force will be our force of friction, which will be static friction, because we really don't want this to slide, but we do want it to rotate. <coughs> so this will be our force of friction. We don't know how much friction there will be. In fact, static friction scales. <coughs> so because static friction scales, um, whatever the mu value here is, we're just going to say it's enough, and we'll, we'll have to find out what that friction is later on. So, <clears throat> seeing as how this quarter goes down the inclined plane like so, um, there will be forces that are un unbalanced. So, looking like this, we know we can break up mg into its two components. The sum of all forces in our rotated y direction, which would be, would be this way, would be our normal force minus our mg. Uh, it's going to be cosine of theta to get that component. should be equal to zero, which means that these two should be equal to each other. Um, set this up so that we have two and four, so that the angle here should be about 30 degrees. <coughs> and if you wanted to do inverse tangent, we could do two or four or one half, and that would be... And, whoa. Oh, wait, hold on. Not inverse tangent. Inverse sine uh -huh, of 0.5 is going to be 30 degrees. There we go. Went stupid for a second there. But <clears throat> moving on. So 30 degrees will be good. This normal force is indeed equal to our mg cosine theta. And uh, we'll do the sum of all forces in the x direction, our horizontal direction on our inclined plane, in the direction of the inclined plane. <clears throat> which will be mg sine theta minus our force friction is equal to ma. So again, we don't know what the force friction is, so we really can't solve this at the moment. <clears throat> but now, what we do also need to do is we need to say, hey, this thing is going to rotate, it's going to turn as it goes down here, and the thing that's going to turn is going to be friction. So not only do we need to draw a sum of all forces, but we should also draw a sum of all torque on this thing. There we go. And we have a force that would be of friction going this way, providing that clockwise kind of rotating torque force friction here. We again don't know what that is. We would have the normal force applied here towards the center, showing that we have no rotation from normal force. And of course, we have our force gravity coming from the center of this object going straight down. And that also does not apply any kind of torque to the object. The only thing applying torque would be our force of friction. And force of friction, well, the sum of all torque is equal to the force of friction um, <clears throat> multiplied by r, the radius. Torque would be force times distance. Friction is applied at the radius of the circle. And that's equal to what we call I alpha. Like F equals MA, uh, torque is equal to I alpha. I is now the inertia. Previously, um, the inertia is just going to be mass, but now we need to worry about where that mass is and what kind of shape it is and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> friction is equal to force friction times R is equal to I, and the I of this 
object. This is a disk, so we'll call the inertia of it for a disk. Solid disk, uniform disk, one half m r squared. So the other thing we, we did, not, did not set here is what is the mass of the disk? Uh, let's say the mass of our disk is going to be 0 0.5 kilograms. Just to make it an easy number. So here we are. Um, let's start plugging numbers in. I, I know. Let's go ahead and cross that out. Let's go ahead and plug numbers in. We don't know friction. We do know r is a quarter. <laughs> we know that i is going to be one half m, is 0.5, and then we have r again, 0.25, and that's going to be squared times this thing that we call alpha. <coughs> alpha is our angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is how fast the quarter will be speeding up angle wise how many angles per second per second it will be speeding up by just like regular acceleration is meters per second per second angular acceleration is radians per second per second and um what we're do we'll do here is we will do some let's do some math um hmm. let's move the 0.5 over on this side let's see if we divided both sides by 0.5 um, point or point two five point five divided by point two five that would go in there twice so that would end up with a two divided by two you know I'm going to show the math here just so that we don't get people getting all confused by just talking out of it so I've got half of point five is going to be zero point two five we're going to have a, another zero point two five here but that's squared so really we have three of them. Then we're going to divide both sides by the 0 0.25, so then we'll just end up having two of them with an alpha. So here we have 0 0.25, and that's going to be squared times alpha. That is going to be the force friction. Uh, where can we put that? Let's see. We'll put that up here. Um, mg times the sine of theta, which was 30. Start to put numbers in slowly. Uh, minus our force friction, which is now 0 0.25 squared alpha is equal to ma. <clears throat> hmm. What else could we do? What else could we do? Let's see. Let's, let's go ahead and turn the alpha into a. Um, angular acceleration is equal to linear acceleration if, our, if we're talking about spinning about the edge there. And so if we are accelerating about the edge, the way we turn angular acceleration into the actual linear acceleration of the object would be just to multiply it by r. And so we would just take r and multiply alpha by r. Um, or the other way around would be to say that a divided by r is equal to alpha. And we'll use that right here. So we have mg, m is 0.5, g is 10. Uh, sine of 30 is going to be another 0.5 minus 0.25 squared alpha is a divided by r, r being the 0.25 and that's equal to 0.5 and a because we don't know a either. Let's see what starts to cancel out here. Uh, let's see half of 10 is going to be 5, half of 5 is going to be 2.5 so I'm going to have 2.5 for this whole thing, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 squared, one of those goes away. And uh, let's go ahead and add it to the other side. So 0 0.5 plus 0.25 is equal to 0.75a. And uh, we're going to go ahead and divide 2.5 by 0.75 to get the acceleration of my object. Oh, what is that? How many times? I could probably do this in my head, but I won't want to. Let's see, 0 0.75. 3.33333. 3. So the acceleration of the object is 3.33 meters per second squared. <clears throat> All right. So this object will be rotating and accelerating linearly and rotationally down this inclined plane. The acceleration linearly will be 3.33333333333 meters per second squared. Uh, it's got four meters to go. And so if it has four meters to go, let's see, we can use this equation. The change of position is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. Change of position is going to be four. Uh, initial velocity is nothing. 
1 half a 3.33 repeating uh, t squared. Let's go ahead and solve that for time. Time is going to be 4 times 2 is 8. 8 divided by 3.33333 and then square rooted. Time is about 1.55 seconds. <clears throat> and under the acceleration at 3.333 for 1.55 seconds, we can just multiply those together. And we should have a final velocity linearly of 5.164 meters per second. So this thing is going to be moving down, traveling down the inclined plane at about 5.164 meters per second by the end. So it's going to be spinning. Uh, we'll look, we'll have to look at that too. <clears throat> but let's look at look, let's look at that in a different way. How about that? So because we can we can run torque, you know, looking at the frictional torque and all that stuff. Um, I guess now we could find the force friction because we would be able to plug back in over here since we knew the acceleration. But tell you what, let's go ahead and go to energy. Energy in this case, um, what kind of energy do we, do we start with? You know, potential energy, gravitational potential energy, MGH. So energy being energy, um, energy in the beginning should equal energy in the end. Be careful. Some of you are going to say you lose energy due to friction here. You actually don't. Uh, because the frictional torque, the, fr the force friction, is not sliding friction, it's actually static friction. So you don't lose that energy, you still retain it in the form of the rotation. So you're going to get kinetic energy of rotation here. <clears throat> and the way to set that up is you say, hey, we have mgh. That should equal translational kinetic energy that we're used to, mv, 1 half mv squared, plus this rotational kinetic energy, 1 half i omega squared. If you notice, these are very, very similar in their setup, but with rotation, we need to know the inertia of it, which means we need to know the size of it and how much mass is spread out. And then we talk about the angular velocity of it, not just the translational velocity of it. It's how fast this thing is spinning rotationally. So <clears throat> let's plug some stuff in. I know i is going to be uh, 1 half <clears throat> mr squared from over here. And we'll keep this in variables. I know I plug in the numbers over there. Kind of just felt like it. But here we'll keep it in variable format just so that things will cancel out nicely. I is 1 half mr squared. Then we have the omega squared there. And just like we did for acceleration, for the angular acceleration, um, omega, the angular velocity times r, is actually going to be the um, translational velocity of this whole object. <clears throat> so as this object spins, the edge of this object spinning about its own center is moving at the same speed as the center going down. That's with reference to its own center. If we were to talk about this object in reference to the ground, then really the bottom of that quarter, the bottom of that spinning disk, is not moving in reference to the ground. And so really, I like to talk about it in terms of its own center because then it's just rotating about its own self. So the, velocity, the edge velocity would be equal to the translational center of mass velocity. If that's the case, r squared omega squared is simply going to be v squared. v squared. <clears throat> and that lets us divide. Um, we can divide everything by m, just cancel that out. So I've got a g. i got an h. I've got a 1 half v squared and a 1 fourth v squared right here. So one half plus a fourth, uh, what, three fourths? Three fourths V squared. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move that over. Four over three GH is equal to our final velocity. It's going to be square root on the left side. And let's just double check because we, we know that the uh, final velocity over here was about 5.164. Let's plug some numbers in. Got a four thirds. Got a G. 10, got an h, which is uh, 2, and we're going to square root that sucker, so let's see what we get. 10 times 2 is going to be 20, 20 times 4 divided by 3, and then we're going to square root it. Looking good, looking good, 5.8, we got 5.164, just like we had on the other side, so 5.164 meters per second is going to be our translational velocity. That's how fast this thing is going to be going down like this. <clears throat> And again, if you wanted to find the angular velocity, angular velocity in this case would just be our translational velocity divided out by the uh, radius. The radius was a quarter. 
because it's a quarter. Uh, so we'll just divide by 0.25 or multiply by 4. And we get a angular velocity of 20.66 radians per second by the end. <coughs> just to go on and make sure everything's all good. <coughs> Mm, 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 mm. Looking around, looking around. Tell you what, let's take this uh, acceleration here and let's divide that by 0.25 as well. So 3.333333 uh, divided by 0.25 or multiplied by 4 gives me an alpha of 13.33 radians per second squared. This is just a last minute check. And I'm going to multiply this by the time. The time that we took was 1.55. So times 1.55 gives me 20.6666, which is exactly what we got over here. So everything's matching up very nicely. So working with energy, turns out that um, works out just fine. You can do it with torque and forces and kinematics, or you can do it over here with your energy. You can also work it with momentum, but I kind of don't want to do that right now because we're running a little long. So uh, just take everything into consideration. The big the big thing that we need to have here is that this guy was not sliding. It was actually locked and um, rotating without slipping. So that's pretty important. We had just enough friction for us to do that. And of course, static friction would scale. All right, we'll wrap it up there.